hi all um i hope you enjoyed your snow day yesterday um we're in class today and we're reviewing for the test that we decide is going to be on friday for the year 2018 it's going to be on friday could change next year um just want you to know that we do expect you after even a six day break to remember what we learned in the last two weeks so we're going to do a quick review for the test coming up and we're just gonna have some practice problems for homework um, the answer keys online again um, but we just want you to remember the key things that we taught you and I'm going to give you just three simple examples and then I expect you to apply yourself in your homework um, if you have a lot of questions I expect you to either come in and work with myself or Mr. Smith but I think it should work pretty good so first of all let's take to the very beginning we're solving equations um, with trig values in it, okay? And we want to do one thing. I want you to remember no matter what. When we're solving, I want you to remember that we are really only going to look at the domain for answers between 0 and 2 pi. And we're not going to include 2 pi unless that's the only answer you get when you're solving the problem. Otherwise, um, we want everything less than 2 pi when we're working with it. And so remember on some of the problems when we're looking with the period and stuff, we have to make sure that we're under 2 pi when we do our answers. So do not forget um, that's what our domain is going to be. And so that's where our answers are going to be between. So, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do one trig term. So we're going to start at the very beginning. And remember, this was the big thing you need to do. You need to isolate the trig term. and solve. All right, so a quick example of this would be the following problem. It'd be 4 sine squared x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now understand there's only one trig term, that's the sine squared x. So then I want you to isolate it. So go ahead and add 1 to both sides. So I got 4 sine squared x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 4, so I get sine squared x is equal to 3 fourths. And then remember, I'm solving for, I'm taking, um, trying to get rid of the squared sine, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But if I take the square root of both sides, i got to remember to go plus or minus the square root of 3 fourths. So my answer becomes sine of x is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2. Now, for some of you, it helps if you rewrite it individually and then you solve for each one and then take your arc sine and you have your positive root 3 over 2 equals x and then so we're going to do your arc sine of a negative root 3 over 2 is equal to x. Now some of you can literally go from this step straight to your answers um, I probably still would encourage most of you to probably do the second step. I think it's just good for most people to realize I'm going inverse sine. I'm doing the arc sine to get the values. But let's go ahead and let's think about this real quick. I'm solving for the sine x. If I have a positive root 3 over 2, or when I have a sine of root 3 over 2, isn't that when we have 60 degrees, which is going to be our pi over 3? So if it's positive, sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. So that's going to end up being pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And then over, when I have a negative root 3 over 2, that's going to be my third and fourth quadrants. And so that's going to end up being 4 pi over 3 and then 5 um, pi over 3. So those would be my four answers for this tree equation. So we end up doing it in all of them. Now, not every time do you have all four quadrants you're gonna use, but that's just the basic idea. So if you have one trig term, you need to isolate that trig term and solve. All right, and you notice, I do expect you to have the unit circle memorized, okay? Now, let's talk about when we have two trig terms. For some reason, this really um, started throwing a lot of you off, but guys, I wanna remind you, you have the skills, you just need to be confident in yourself, okay? So first things first, when you have two trig terms, what do you need to do? You need to set the equation equal to zero. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do. And then you have a couple different things. This is an and or, so sometimes um, you can use identities 
sometimes you don't want to use identity sometimes it's more work and or factor to solve so sometimes you don't need to use identities you just need to factor out when your trig function your trig terms and then you can solve pretty well so i'm going to use one that we're going to actually use an identity for but there's other ones now guys where is the best place to study for this stuff the best place to study is doing your old homework problems where you have answers okay you should have graded yourself and have correct answers okay um also just looking at old notes and stuff like that that we've done um problems we've done together in class to make sure you have those okay so here's the example we're going to use we're going to go to cosine squared x equals 2 plus sine x so this tells us first thing to do is you're supposed to set that equation equal to zero. So which way do you think you're going to move? Are you going to move to the right or to the left? Um, it truly doesn't matter, but most people would normally naturally in this case go to where the squared is and probably go to the left. So I'm going to go 2 cosine squared x minus sine x minus 2 is equal to zero. Okay, now looking at that, it almost looks like you could factor, but the problem is I have two different terms. I have cosine squared and I have um, sine. So I have two different trig terms. So I'm going to use the fact I know my Pythagorean identities and change 2 cosine squared x to 1 minus sine squared x. Minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to distribute, so I get 2 minus 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now here's the cool thing, look what happens. I'm going to use a green here to show this. These two simplify out. So if that's the case, I'm now looking at a sine squared x and a sine x. I think I'm like, okay, I need to be able to probably factor right now. And I don't like negatives, so I'm going to take the negative with it, and I'm going to factor out just a negative sine x. When I do that, what do I have left is 2 sine x minus 1. Now, if you're confused to where I got that, see if I can lasso this and move it down, you can show this step right here. Oops, you know I didn't want to show. Oh, that's too hilarious. It didn't lasso and move it down. Okay, sorry guys, I entertain myself sometimes. You could have rewritten it like this first. I mean, it matters up to you if you need to show that step. I'm a firm believer, show more work if it helps you do it correctly. Now, looking at this, I have it factored. Now, remember with the multiplication property of zero, like it doesn't matter which one is equal to zero. So we set them both equal to zero. So negative sine x is equal to zero. Then I get two sine x minus one is equal to zero. Well, on this first one, I divide by negative 1, and obviously, I'm going to get 0. So when is sine equal to 0? Well, that is when you're at 0 or pi. So we got two of them right now. Then if I'm solving for sine x, my trig equations on the right here, I get sine x is equal to a positive 1 half. Well, when is sine equal to 1 half? Well, that's 30 degrees and it needs to be positive so that's going to be in your first and your fourth quadrants and that means we have to be exact answers so it's in radians now again if you need to show your arc sine step no one's going to stop you notice i didn't do that here but you could put in that step if you need to if you don't i'm okay with that as well did everyone hear me on that i'm good with showing it either way notice though i did get to this step no matter what. So when I do that, we said that was going to be when it was 30 degrees, and so that's going to be over 6, over 6, and so we're going to have one that's going to be pi over 6, and then just short of 2 because it's in the fourth quadrant, and so that's going to end up being 11 pi over 6. So those are our four answers for when we have this equation, so when we had two trig terms. Okay, now However, we also know the equations don't stay real pretty all the time. Um, we can get ones where the angles of that trig equation are really kind of fancy. That's when you can see ones like, um, you know, x minus pi over 2 could be in there, or you can get like x over 3, or you can get like 3x, you know, things like that that would go in for the trig function. So we're going to go ahead and write what you're supposed to do. First of all, 
if an angle is other than an x value, okay, you're going to let theta equal the angle. Then, okay, you're going to solve for theta, then solve for x. Okay, so we're going to go solve for theta, then x. And add the period if necessary. Now let me tell you when it's necessary to add um, uh, the period. That's when you're going to get ones where it's anytime it's under like 2 pi is your period. So kind of think about those. All right. So let's do an example of this that we can get together. And I think this one will be probably too easy, but I just want to remind you of a few things. One reason why I'm picking this one. Um, what if we get the one like this? The tangent of 2x is equal to 1. All right, so 2x, um, some people are like, well, can I use the double angle identities? And you don't want to do that when you're solving many times equations, at least in this case. So we're going to let, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let theta is equal to 2x. I'm going to define my variable. So I get tangent theta is equal to 1. So then we go our arc tangent of 1 is equal to theta. Theta is going to end up equaling 45 degrees because that's when um, the tangent is equal to 1. Well, that's going to be our pi over 4, and it has to be positive. So when is tangent positive? First and third quadrants. We're at pi over 4, and we're at 5 pi over 4. So now we've solved for theta. We need to solve for x. So now we're just going to set equal. So we go 2x is equal to pi over 4. Solving for x, I divide both sides by 2, and that gets me pi over 8. And I go 2x is equal to 5 pi over 4, and then we're going to solve for x again. We get 5 pi over 8. All right, now, this is one of those where I need to solve for the period. So remember, and I'm going to put this off to the side, remember how to solve for the period. Okay? If you have sine, cosine, cosecant, or secant, the period is going to be 2 pi over b. And remember, b is the value in front of your x, okay, that you factored out or is in front. Um, if you have tangent or cotangent, your period, remember, is pi over b. Well, what's my period here? Well, that's tangent, so it's going to be period equals pi over 2. Now, remember, I want to add on the period as long as it's less than 2 pi. So remember, I want this to be less than, well, what's that going to be? 16 pi over 8. Well, why did I pick 16 pi over 8, guys? Was 16 divided by 8? 2 pi. So that allows me to think fractionally what I need to have for my value. Also, I'm going to change this so it's easier to add on to my fractions. I'm going to get a common denominator with my actual answers I already have. So I'm going to put an 8 in the denominator. Well, that's the same thing as going for pi over 8. So to get my answers then, I'm going to write down what I have. I got pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, and then I'm going to add 4 pi over 8. So I look at it first and I go, okay, pi over 8 plus 4 pi over 8 gives me 5 pi over 8. Oh, we already have that answer. Then we're going to go ahead and add 4 pi over 8 again, and that's going to be 9 pi over 8. All right, so far we're still good because we're under 16 pi over 8. So then we add 4 pi again, and I get 13 pi over 8. Then I have to decide again further, like, can I add again? Well, 13 plus 4 is 17 pi over 8. So this is our restricted domain that we're going to use for our answer. All right, so hopefully that jarred memories. I know it's not your favorite memories, but that you should be able to do the homework assignment. So make sure that you do the test review. It's not a lot of problems, but good practice. And make sure you grade it before you submit it. All right, hopefully that helps you guys review and it helps you study for the test that we're going to have on Friday.